In our previous video, we left off our initial instrument configuration with an LC ready status. That is where we will begin this next guide on performing a single injection and a basic quick batch in lab solution software. When you are in real-time analysis on the acquisition submenu in the assistant bar, you will see an option to edit instrument parameters, start a single run, start a quick batch, or open up post-run data analysis software. If you back up to the main menu on the assistant bar, you can see that you can access the acquisition submenu by clicking on data acquisition. To set your method conditions for your injection, you will need to click on edit instrument parameters either in the main control user interface or from the assistant bar menu. Once you have the instrument parameters open, you will see the various tabs for setting your method conditions given the hardware configuration that was set in your software. To start with, the first tab you will see is the data acquisition tab. This tab lets you set your overall method time and data acquisition time. Typically, those two are one and the same. However, if for any reason you would like your detectors to only collect a subset of the overall acquisition method, you can set a unique start time and end time for any data acquisition with your detectors. Under the LC Time Program tab, you can program changes to your method conditions over time. In the example I am showing here, this is a standard mobile phase gradient time program where I am varying the organic strength in reverse phase conditions to allow the analytes to elude off faster but still getting baseline resolution between them. Additionally, I am showing a typical column wash to clean off any residual analytes as well as a column re-equilibration time to stabilize the chemistry and pressure prior to the next injection. In addition to changing the mobile phase concentration through the pumps, within the time program you can also control the column oven, controller, and auto sampler. Under the pump tab, you can select the pumping mode for your given hardware configuration as well as set the initial conditions for your method including flow rate and mobile phase composition. One important note is that by default, your maximum pressure is defined here to be 1451 psi. This is an additional safety feature included in the software that will require you as the user to go in and set the maximum pressure for your instrument. This is not only hardware specific but also column specific. Be sure to check with your column manufacturer before setting the maximum pressure for your instrument. Depending on your detector, you will have additional options under a detector tab. In this case, I have a PDA in this configuration that will allow me to specify the range of wavelengths for the acquisition, the lamp type, and the polarity, as well as the slit width, cell temperature, and spectrum resolution. Under the column oven tab, you will see a checkbox to turn the column oven on or off for the given method, as well as set the initial starting temperature for the oven and a temperature max for the method. Under the auto sampler tab, you can set your sample aspiration speed, cooler temperature if equipped, as well as set your rinsing mode and conditions. Under the Auto Purge tab, you can preset your auto purge conditions for mobile phase and purge time as well as set your warm up time and flow rate. Now that you have set your method conditions, by clicking on download or download and close, you are sending those conditions to your instrument controller, typically the CBM20A. You will also need to save the method file to the PC for reference. Prior to performing your single injection or quick batch, make sure to equilibrate your system flow path by turning on your pump, column oven, and lamp if necessary. This allows your instrument to establish the proper initial condition mobile phase chemistry, as well as stabilize the system pressure, both of which are important for good chromatography. Now that your instrument is equilibrated with your initial conditions, you can select single run, either from the control interface or from the assistant bar. Once opened, you will need to input the sample name, sample ID, method file, data file name, as well as a vial number, injection volume, and tray number. Once you see the LC running status, your method is running and the data is being acquired. For the sake of expediency within this video, the time has been accelerated to show the single injection acquisition.
Now that your method is complete and the data is done being collected, you will return to an LC ready status as seen here. Note the instrument remains on and pumping based on the initial conditions set in the method file. To perform a series of injections, the simplest way is to use a quick batch. For the sake of simplicity, I am going to demonstrate creating a batch from the same sample vial but varying the sample injection volume. When you open up quick batch, you will need to name the batch file, select the method file, name the data file unless using auto file name, select the sample type, enter the sample name, sample ID, number of repetitions, and injection volume. You can select the sample or samples by clicking and dragging across the locations in the graphic interface. Once you have all the information entered, you need to simply click Add to Batch Table. This is a fast and intuitive way to build a batch table. Once your batch table is complete, just click Start and your series of injections will begin running. For the sake of time, I have skipped ahead to the end of the batch run where you will see the batch table with all of your completed injections. Thank you for watching this video guide on performing a single injection and basic quick batch. To see more video guides on Shimazu products, please visit our YouTube channel. If you have any questions or require additional support, please don't hesitate to contact us by calling our 1-800 number. Excellence in Science. Shimazu.